out front tonight, new video of what Putin is doing to his own soldiers. Video that appears to be Russian soldiers banished to a dark concrete cellar for refusing to return to the front line in Ukraine. We want to show you this footage obtained by Astra, which is a group of independent Russian journalists. Here it is. You can see soldiers dressed in Russian military fatigues packed into a small windowless room. That's why there's not much light there. One of them then explains how they're being treated. Listen to it. Well, here we are. They arrested us. This is October 2nd, 2022. We are part of the 3rd Battalion of the 488th Motorized Rifle Regiment. We were arrested for refusing to follow orders. Yes, refusing to follow orders. They sent us to a basement of a military unit. All of us are mobilized soldiers of the Russian army, called up by decree of the president. They are threatening to send us back to the meat grinder, to the slaughterhouse, to get routed by the enemy. We refused. So this is how we live. This is where we go to the toilet and cover your faces if you're afraid. This is how we sleep. What a life. Everything here is molded. We're basically living like bombs. And you can see that there's something leaking from the ceiling here as well. CNN cannot independently confirm the video, but it comes as Putin is under incredible pressure. Today, Putin speaking to his newly formed, quote unquote, coordination council, saying that the challenges Russian forces are facing are, again, Putin's direct words, serious and significant. So serious, in fact, that the rhetoric from Russia is ramping up. A top official with the Putin's Security Council saying, I believe, again, this is a quote, that with the continuation of the special military operation, it becomes more and more urgent to carry out the de-Satanization of Ukraine. De-Satanization. This is from a top official on Putin's Security Council. Where do you go after words like this when you say you're fighting Satan? The context here on actions is that today, Russia's deputy ambassador to the UN claiming again that Ukraine was constructing a dirty bomb. That's the action, a claim widely seen as a pretext to allow Putin to escalate to nuclear war. And tonight, President Biden responding. Let me just say, Russia would be making an incredibly serious mistake if we were to use a tactical nuclear weapon. I'm not guaranteeing you that it's a false flag operation yet. We don't know. But uh, it would be a serious, serious mistake. This all comes as we're getting unprecedented and exclusive access to what's happening to Russian troops on the battlefield. This is actually what Putin doesn't want and can't afford for Russians to know or to see. His soldiers losing their jaws, their fingers, their legs because of commanders who deceived them. And Russia sent them into battle with absolutely no plan to care for their injuries, which is why they ended up in a Belarusian hospital. This is an exclusive report, and we're going to show it to you in just a moment. But first, Nick Robertson is out front live in Kyiv. And Nick, you know, you hear Biden's warning to Putin, saying it would be a mistake for Russia to use a tactical nuke. And yet again today, from the Russian emissary to the UN, we hear the false flag operation, uh, possible false flag operation being pushed, right, where the Russians say Ukraine will use a dirty bomb. And that is seen as a pretext for Putin to go nuclear. Does Putin really think the West will, will believe him on this dirty bomb? I don't think he particularly cares if the West believes him. Um, he knows that this is a point of leverage. He knows that the West understands this, that when he uses this language, as he may escalate the situation. The Ukrainians don't believe him because they don't, they're not building a dirty bomb. Uh, Ukrainians' Western allies don't believe him because they don't believe Ukraine is building a dirty bomb. Um, but Putin's also appealing to his own domestic audience, those that don't want to go and fight, those that are refusing to fight because he's raising the stakes and saying, Ukraine is going to go nuclear on us. Mm -hmm. He's also appealing to people like President Xi in China. He's appealing to people like Prime Minister Narendra Modi in India. He's appealing to his sort of big international autocrat backers. Those, uh, you know, President Xi has said to him, that, or President Putin has said to President Xi over the past month that he understands China's got some concerns. Um, Narendra Modi, 
Indian Prime Minister has told President Putin that this is not the time for a war. Putin is making it clear to them that this is the time for a war and mm. he does need their backing because Ukraine is out of control and it's going to escalate. So the, Putin's real appeal here, uh, and he has a huge track record, as we all know, of lying because he said he was never going to invade Ukraine. He, right. he knows the West doesn't trust him. All right, Nick, thank you very much from Kyiv tonight. And I want to go now to Democratic Congressman Jim Himes. He sits on the Intelligence Committee, and frankly, he just returned from Ukraine, where I know you met with President Zelensky and other uh, leaders there in Kyiv. Now, we just showed this footage obtained by a group of independent uh, Russian journalists, right? The, the soldiers are in Russian military fatigues. They're packed into this disgusting cellar. Um, they're saying they were arrested for refusing to go back to the front, and they're choosing to make this video and hoping uh, that, that it will be seen. Now, we can't independently confirm the video, but does it fit with what you're hearing from Ukrainian leaders and U.S. intelligence? Uh, very much so, Aaron. Um, as you might imagine, the Ukrainians have captured a lot of Russian troops, and they interrogate them. And, of course, what they hear, uh, and oftentimes we'll see the reports of what they've heard, um, is that they were fooled. They were told this was a training exercise. They were told that, uh, you know, what are all sorts of different lies that, 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 that now have them fighting and dying in Ukraine. And remember, in Ukraine, you know, Ukraine was a place where lots of Russians had cousins and sisters and, and friends. Uh, and so the only way, and this connects your two stories, right, the only way you either compel, uh, the, you compel soldiers to do this is either to threaten them uh, with the kind of conditions you showed or to dehumanize the Ukrainians. And that's, of course, where the desatanification comes in. It's not yeah. going to work because these Russian soldiers know these Ukrainians, but that's what they're doing. So on this desatanization, right, this is the assistant secretary of Putin's Security Council who said this. And I, I simply pointed out to say, when you are saying that you are fighting Satan, there isn't a whole lot worse to go, right? So in terms of your words, you're right there. You're right there at existential end of the line. And this comes in the context that top Russian officials are warning of, you know, this, this Ukraine's going to use a dirty bomb, and that is obviously would be a, a false flag attack that could possibly allow Putin to then escalate to true nuclear weapons. What is your understanding right now from your briefings, from your time with President Zelensky? Is it is it a real possibility that Putin would use nuclear weapons? You know, it's, it's hard to answer that question because it's hard to predict his behavior. And he has made every, uh, since February of, uh, of this year, he's made every mistake that you could make. Right. Uh, and that is, you know, sometimes the question is, is Putin playing three-dimensional dimensional chess here or whatever? He has made every single strategic and tactical mistake, and he's lost 70,000 people, and he's losing on the battlefield, and he's at risk domestically. So I think they're throwing spaghetti on the wall. They're, you know, just putting stuff out there in the hope that something that something works. But but uh, here's the thing to remember about, about a dirty bomb, and that's, of course, very different than a nuclear weapon. Uh, what he risks... It's not so much the ire of the West, as Nick Robertson said. He doesn't care about that. The only thing he's got going for him right now is the partnership of sorts with China. Do you think China stays in that partnership if, uh, if uh, Russia uses a dirty bomb? I don't, I don't think so. So the right. stakes are high for him. So yesterday I spoke with Abbas Galyamov, who is Putin's former speechwriter. He spent a lot of time with him writing speeches. He said he's seen a big um, shift in him. In, in several ways over these past few years. Um, and here's something he said about his perception of Putin right now. He is becoming more and more emotional. Previously, he was very logical, very rational. He could control his emotions easily. And he's exhausted. Uh, more and more emotional, as opposed, and he said he used to be previously logical and very rational. But now, more emotional, exhausted, not able to control his emotions. On the Intel Committee, how concerned are you right now about his emotional state, about his rationality, frankly, in making decisions? We're very concerned, right? Because here's a man who regarded himself as Peter the Great. He was one of the great leaders of Russia. What has he actually done? He's unified uh, NATO. Uh, a country, you know, Finland and, and, and other countries that we never imagined. He's unified NATO, he's destroyed his country's economy, and he's shown that the Russian military would lose to the Rhode Island National Guard, right? Mm -hmm. That's what he's, he's achieved, this man who regarded himself as a great person. So the question then becomes, what happens to a desperate man like that? And maybe, you know, it's, it's, it's hard to answer that question. And yet there's some in your own party who say it's time now to to make a deal with Putin, to do some sort of negotiation. Obviously, the House Progressive Caucus withdrew this letter that um, dozens of them had signed saying that, that the U.S. should negotiate directly with Putin. Um, but one prominent member of the caucus, caucus uh, Rokana, Congressman Rokana, has since, since said today, 
that he still stands by it and that they shouldn't have taken that letter back. So he does believe that the U.S. should negotiate. What do you say to him? I'd say a couple of things. Number one, the Ukrainians are winning this war. Number two, um, do you trust Vladimir Putin? If you could reach some agreement, uh, do you trust him to abide by that agreement? Number three, what's in that agreement? Because the progressive letter, which thankfully they withdrew, its objective was for a free and independent Ukraine. Okay, that's a start. It's not just a free and independent Ukraine. It is the Russians facing accountability for their war crimes. It is the Russians vacating every square foot of Ukrainian land. So that raises the question, what are you negotiating towards? Because we're not going to, well, I shouldn't say we. This well, you're only Ukrainian. negotiating if you're going to give up land. Exactly. And that's not that. The, I was in Kyiv 72 hours ago from the president of Ukraine to the guy who served coffee in the hotel. They said this ends when every Russian is off every inch of our land. All right. And that's what uh, hopefully uh, feel like Rokana will hear from you tonight. All right. Thank you so much, Congressman Hines. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Very much.